Hello, everybody. It sounded like uh, it was kind of windy here for a second. <laughs> um, I'll let everyone get seated for a second. Five, five, four, three, here we go. My name's Tristan. Um, I am the co founder of two projects I'm going to talk about today, actually, not just AK. I'll talk about the lead up to it. Um, but mostly to tie that all together, I want to talk about something that was alluded to very briefly at the beginning, the concept of open source. Uh, how many people in the room are familiar with what with this term, open source? Okay, cool. And normally, I'm imagining most people associate that with software and you know freely downloadable software that you can edit the code and everyone co-creates these amazing pieces of, uh, of uh, software. But there's another side to open source, which is the side that I'm involved with, that I think is um, incredibly interesting in its, own, in its own way, called open source hardware. And what that is, is that's the same exact principle of sharing, co-creating, and um, making things together, but it's physical things as opposed to code. Um, and what I'm seeing happen a lot in the last couple of years, which is progressively interesting is applying the physical open hardware to regenerative ecological design and um, environmental technology that's helping us produce energy, process waste, grow food. Um, and that's where, that's where our project Acre comes in. But before I start talking about Acre, I really quickly wanted to, oh no, this isn't working, is it? How do I plug this in? Oh, right, just this one thing, okay. Um, before I start talking about Acre, I want to talk about a project called Open Source Beehives that um, we started as basically an open source response to colony collapse disorder, which a lot of you have probably heard about where all the bees have been disappearing. Um, <clears throat> and we were actually inspired originally by a project that worked for many years out of this building called WikiHouse, who some people might have heard of which is essentially the concept of digital designs that people collaboratively create that can be fabricated to create houses that are super easy to put together. You don't need a like, really skilled craftsman. You can get together with some friends, take this design, cut out pieces of plywood using an automated machine, and then slam them together over a weekend and have a house. So we thought, oh, well, it's nice making houses for people, but what about, what about these guys, these bees who are dying? So I'll, um, I'll put this on. I'm not sure if it's going to play audio, but I'll turn the audio off just so you can see it. So, this is just not showing you anything. Okay. Eh? Okay, here we go. There we go. So, just let that play in the background. Essentially, what we did is um, we took the concept <coughs> of uh, this machine called a CNC router, which is essentially a flat bedded. Uh, um, cutting machine, you throw a sheet of plywood onto this thing, you'll see it in a second on the screen, you throw a sheet of plywood or any sheet material onto the bed, and then an automated drill bit will cut sections, will cut it into whatever you design on a digital computer. So it's a way of basically bringing things from a computer where you design them into reality. And that's the really powerful part of open source hardware is that you can digitally share stuff, but then make real stuff. So I could design this, and we did design this all over the world between many people, and then we, you can fabricate it anywhere that one of these machines exists, and you think, oh, well, how many of these machines really are there out there? And there's a lot. These are used to make custom cabinetry, um, and they exist also in many things called fab labs, which you might be familiar with, which are community maker spaces all over the planet. There are now like almost 400 of those, um, in, one in every major city at least. So <clears throat> it becomes quite powerful when you collaboratively work on designs like this to have them replicated everywhere, and it can happen really fast. Um, so again, when you apply this to something like Colony Collapse, we put this design out there, and it's now, uh, we did a crowdfunding campaign, we got quite a lot of uh, publicity about it, but this ended up, we've got about probably 200 of these hives now around the world in places as various as New Zealand to Texas. Um, and what the crowdfunder also did was trying to fund the development of a sensor that we could put into these hives and collaboratively study colony collapse disorder um, using uh, Internet of Things and open source hardware electronics. 
So this is like a really old design. Um, actually, this was the like design two. We're now in design six point something. So we don't use these silly little nut bolt things anymore. They didn't work very well. But that's the beautiful thing about open source is you know we put this out there. We brought them to maker spaces. We got feedback from other makers, and they were like, "Oh, use mortise and tenon joints. So use hole and pegs." Um, as opposed to these silly nut things, which is what we did. And just to show you, this is like, so this is the most recent design. And then we've got, this is part of our forum where we get people to post ones that they've made themselves. So we've got quite a few people having made them and you're using them. A lot of people around the United States, but like I said, people in, um, in Thailand, people in, um, people in Australia, people in New Zealand. And they're all awaiting as well for when we finish this bloody sensor, which is taking us so, so long to do. Uh, it's quite complicated trying to... <laughs> we kind of jumped into the deep end by trying to monitor one of the most complicated organisms known to man uh, with our first sensor project, so it's taking quite a long time. So anyway, that's the Open Source BS project, and during this project, um, I became kind of curious about how this same kind of technology, i.e. the CNC fabrication, and um, open source side of stuff could be applied to uh, urban agriculture. So that's what Acre is. And let me just play another video. I also make films, so I have lots of videos to, to play all the time. So this is. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is the same kind of concept. As you can see, these are all components that were cut out using a CNC router machine. Um, this is called our egg house, which is a CNC fabricated chicken coop, fit for two chickens. It's not really appropriate for like, I don't know, having it outside in the winter and this thing, so it's got barely any protection, but it's a start. And that's the point of this, is that every time you develop something and you share the designs freely for others to download, you're inviting participation from people who are interested in the same things to throw ideas at this, maybe adjust the, the, um, the end of the coop so it has some sort of uh, insulation. This is our um, grow grid, which we've actually kind of given up because it wasn't that great for design. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is just a, a stacked um, multiple tier planter. This is called the grow wall, which is a modular um, stackable planter that goes onto rails that you'll see in a second here. But all this stuff, the, the way we design it is so that you don't have to use screws or glues on anything. We, we like to design things so uh, it's kind of hyper IKEA style for people who don't really uh, have time or necessarily the skill to want to screw stuff together even. We just like having everything included. Um, these designs, by the way, are all quite old. So we designed all this stuff at the beginning of last year. Since then, we did a crowdfunder and um, we've gone to numerous events and we've got a lot of feedback on what is and isn't working with our designs. And there's quite a lot of problems. Uh, one of the major ones being that we use plywood to try and, uh, try and do everything. And that was never really the intention. This is kind of these kind of R prototypes. But we're definitely moving into a new direction now where we're implementing recycled uh, plastic materials that are made out of old milk jugs and stuff. Uh, so we've got that, there's, there's materials like Reichlite. But the, the point is, the standardization of the fact that you're using a machine that's in lots of places and a sheet material, which is a standard thickness, there's lots of different possibilities of the materials you can then use. So these exact same designs could be cut out of plastic, they could be cut out of even um, they have mycelium materials, which are basically like grown out of um, out of mushroom-like material, and you can you can cut those the same way you can cut wood. Um, they're going to biodegrade, but you know it's sustainable um, and recycled stuff. So <clears throat> that was uh, the little bit on Acre. It's kind of old news though. We've got a lot, a lot of new stuff, and I just wanted to quickly show some of the new things we're working on. One of which, so th this is kind of the, the, the logic of open source here. So we have a forum and like when I'm designing stuff, I'll <coughs> put it all in the forum and then have links to download the files. <laughs> I don't think this computer likes open source very much. Um, anyway, links to download the files so you can, you can, ah, you 
you scroll down you can watch the progression of how something's coming along and we haven't had a lot of people collaborating on this one yet but the point is that if anyone wants to jump in they can see the entire documented process of like all the thought and ideas that went into it so this is the kind of latest version of that design um, which is a balcony planter so that that would hang on like a, an urban balcony exterior and you know it's kind of got these these planter bays that can be interchanged and like co like connected to each other and then for it we're designing things like different modules like a like a tomato module here so you can you've got a built-in trellis you can connect that in the middle and then you've got nice little variety of planters um, and lots of stuff like this but I'm also personally very interested in and let me know if I'm going over time I'm just kind of rambling now <laughs> but um, uh, I'm, I'm personally really interested in the ecological cons conservation element of this so you know planters are nice you can use lots of stuff for planters but I'm really interested in for example doing smart pollinator conservation hotels like for other things than bees or bat conservation, butterfly conservation. There's loads of uh, at-risk species that are in our um, urban environments that could really use a lot more citizen science studying. And that's one of the things that we're into is citizen science. So, um, which is normal everyday people being able to study complex uh, environmental and other situations. So we want to embed sensors into ecological conservation kits as well as doing urban agriculture stuff. I think I'm just going over now. So uh, yeah, I think we've got sort of uh, time for two questions. Oh, cool. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the presentation, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any questions? Hi. Um, just a lot of interest, how much is one of these balcony planters if I go to, um, I don't know, CNC cut to MDF cut to size from the corner, how much would If you wanted to make it yourself? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> depends. Uh, so, so the thing is, we, we're a social enterprise too, so we don't just give the stuff away, we like, we give away the designs, but we also offer to uh, make it for you and send it, ship it to you. Um, so you have the choice. Uh, for this particular design, we haven't, uh, this, this is still only digital, like I haven't really looked in depth at the kind of materials and the costs it would take. If you were going to use, um, if you were going to use the materials I've used here, like a mix of plywood and um, recycled <coughs> HDPE plastic, you'd probably be looking at, for one of the three straight planters, I don't know, around like 100 quid if you could find uh, a good shop with the materials on hand. Um, but if you made a plywood, you could probably do it for cheaper than that. So it, it depends. We'll have more information on that later in the year. <laughs> so, how much do the CNC cutters cost to run? To run? Again, it depends. Um, if you go to a fab lab or one of these community spaces, you could potentially use it for very little money, like the cost of a membership, which would be you know anything from fifteen to thirty quid a month. Um, so it could be very cheap, and then if you bought your materials yourself, instead of relying on someone to source them for you, um, you could you could do it potentially very cheaply. Yeah, but you need that's that's the thing is we're kind of encouraging people to learn these processes too. So it's not as complicated as you think, and if you go to these community spaces, there are experts who who love to show you how to do it. So it's it's kind of like an invitation to learn a new technical skill as well. And it's very empowering too, like being able to download something and just look at it as a file and then plug it into a machine and then it makes you an actual physical product. It's, it's really, it's quite an amazing experience to go through. And we maybe don't promote that enough. But so, so this year, at the beginning of this year, we got funded by a foundation called the Shuttleworth Foundation. I don't know if anyone's heard of them. Ubuntu? But, sorry? Ubuntu? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Uh, so it's Mark Shuttleworth who's... Um, uh, basically manages Ubuntu, which is an, a uh, version of Linux, a very popular version of Linux. And, uh, sorry, am I, talking, am I talking too much? Just just kick me, please, <laughs> if I'm talking too much. Um, but yeah, we got funded by them, so that gives us a lot of very much needed breathing room to really focus on not like 
not having to, you know, find out where we're going to get money to feed ourselves, but to actually, you know, make cool stuff. So this year is going to be really fun. And we're actually going somewhere. There's a fab lab in Barcelona um, called Fab Lab Barcelona. And we're going to be there for about three months this year just developing stuff. So if, if anyone here has any ideas for stuff they want to see too, like we're super open to like, oh, that would be a cool thing to make. So we're open to suggestions or, uh, or if you want to make stuff yourself. Then... Hi. Yeah. Hi. Um, just a quick question. How, how I, where is it going in terms of how would I compare that to say open desk or is it, do you have a theme because it sounded, is it food? sounded all over the place? Well, is it food specific or things for growing food or could it be any, could someone, you create a community and I could upload any design or? Oh yeah, it would be food and e ecology specific. So we, we generally focus, you always like, realize how you should have framed something in the beginning, but uh, so our focus is to increase biodiversity in cities through food production, uh, which innately increases biodiversity as well, but also creating pollinator, um, pollinator forage systems and uh, ecological conservation kits as well. So it's quite quite broad and we kind of need to narrow that down. But no, if you, if you send us like a table, we're not gonna probably put it on our site because you send that to open desk. So we do stuff that like interfaces with ecological uh, ecological means, yeah. Cool. Yeah.